Now the transform constraint is another very handy constraint and it's used to transform one thing into another. For example, you can turn a translation into a rotation or vice versa, but you don't need to uh, actually change it. You could actually turn a small translation into a large translation or vice versa. It's a very, very handy constraint. And I'll just quickly show you how to set one up. We're going to choose our target, shift select our owner, control shift C, and then choose our transformation constraint. And the important information that we're looking for mainly is in these two menus here. We're going to map something from to another thing. So we can map a location, a rotation, or a scale into a location, a rotation, or a scale. So I'm going to map a location into a rotation on our owner bone here. Uh, but before we do that, we need to make sure that we change it to local space. You already know how the space works. And I want to change the, um, the local, so I'll just change this to be local, the local y-axis of our bone here. I'm going to turn that into a rotation around the z-axis on our owner here. So how do we do that? Well, uh, I'll just jump back into the front view. So we're going to actually put in our values. This is our mapping from or our target. I'm going to just type in our Y minimum of negative one and then positive one here. That's where we're taking our information from. And we're going to map it to our Z axis, right? this, uh, this one here. We're going to get the information from the Y. And let's just put in some values for the minimum and the maximum. Let's just do negative 90 and positive 90. So now when we move this one up, it's going to move negative 90 degrees. When we move it down, it's going to move positive 90 degrees. And that's how the transformation constraint works. There's a few more intricacies to it, but the only extra thing that I want to show you at this level is the extrapolate value. So at the moment, I don't have this checked. And when I go and hit the, um, if I go past the, the value of one, this is actually going to stop rotating. However, if I turn on extrapolation, it's going to take those values and continue in the past. So we can actually go all the way around if we want. Ooh. So that is how the transformation constraint works. This one is very handy in a lot of situations. We'll actually be doing an exercise later to show you how it works in action.